there's a few there's a few bits to to relate to the expression echo. I'm, I'm, I explained earlier on, partly because of documental theatre or documental productions. I'm just thinking about how documented theatre or scripts that are based on reality can be done, and I've really got two two ideas around um, the the buses and local traffic um, that's to say um, three Thursdays in May is around the elections but it'll have to be after the elections because if it c turns up on the radio uh, there's Ofcom rules I think there, al there always used to be maybe it's changed because the, the telly seems to be getting away with mixing up um, comment and politics to a greater extent than I, I remember but anyway I don't I don't think on phonic we can do a do a play immediately before the elections the, there will come a time when um, we'll, we'll we'll avoid direct intervention I should think so I'm thinking of the, the three Thursdays after the election so it'll be the um, last three weeks of May would be a play called Three Thursdays in May and I might I might get people in the uh, in the wild show to join in with it because um, it will involve conversations f around or from the bus stops uh, I mean this this started with a bus stop that's very close to the Hevitry Medical Centre um, opposite Robinson's News um, because posters appeared there just about the um, the signage the explanation of, of when when a bus might turn up um, but then Chris mentioned um, the bus stop in the bus station actually talks to you um, so that's a way of communicating when the next bus is coming and the idea of a talking bus stop gradually developed because since then we've had a lot more about AI and networking and the bus could, it just might become a, a, a learning bus stop that that uh, knows a lot more about what's going on listens in on conversations and makes comments and there could be more than one of them so the 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 other bus stop that I'm thinking about is the one outside uh, Waitrose because there's a lot going on around there and I think these two bus stops might might well communicate with each other um, about uh, well I th originally I thought boundary roads might be a, a topic um, but it, just before I get to that I'm just annoyed again page uh, 7 that the Express and Echo is, is still using this ridiculous photograph I'm very glad it's been turned down and the appeal has been turned down as well but the the student accommodation that was supposed to be built where the courts and police station were um, has this artist's impression this architect's fabrication of what it might look like from the back of St Luke's um, so the road is totally obscured you just get the lawn and the nice um, the, the the style of the of the wall. You can't you, you don't see the cloisters effect, but it's 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 like um it's and it's actually Victorian, but it looks more um, ancient than that. Um, but the the actual proposal for these buildings took the took the edge right up to the pavement, right up to the road. Um, it, this amount of green green space it has nothing to do with this building it's the building next door um, I know the planning people like Urban Edge so they might have liked the, the proposal but this uh, this is just nonsense I, I've, I've um, 
tweeted about this more recently. At, at Exeter, uh, the Exeter Observer, uh, at Exeter Observer, all one word, dot org, um, they, they reported on this, I think, a little while ago. I think it takes, takes a while to come up as print. Um, but they used this photograph or fabricate. It's not a photograph. It's, a, it's an architect's something or another. Um, I know some architects have, have objections to this sort of thing anyway, but I'm going to describe it as an architect's invention. And I, I think it's totally ridiculous. And I think, I think the Express and Echo, I know they're short of resources, but they, they, should, they should go there and photograph what's actually happening, I think. Um, by the way, the, if you do go to the Extra Observer site, you get a story that the gorge, which I'm, I'm pretty sure is, is, the, is the one that has been built behind where this would have been built, they say it's 70% empty uh, six months after opening as mounting council tax liability looms. Uh, well, um, that's interesting. So it, it, it may be that, whether it's because of things moving online or not, that the the boom in, in building for student accommodation is not as dependable as it was once assumed. Um, because they also, they also point out the Harlequin one hasn't hasn't gone ahead. So I would think all of that is, is um, worth discussing by somebody at some some point. Um, but the main the main one in the in the echo is the changes proposed to city roads in a bid to speed up bus travel. Um, and there's there's two. Um, two bus corridors apparently there's the central one which goes between the Parra Street roundabout and Middlemore roundabout and then there's the eastern one which goes between Sidwell Street and Pinho but what I can't see anywhere in, in this I mean, I've, I've only skipped reading it so I might, I might be wrong they don't relate this to the low traffic neighbourhood discussion which is also Devon County Council or the boundary roads thing um, but those happen to be either side of the area where they've shifted a lot of traffic out of so how those things fit together um, anyway just just as fiction I say this as fiction because um, people think I'm making it up anyway <laughs> or um, not not being balanced, but I'm I'm just a pedestrian walking along. I do drive sometimes, but let's say I'm a pedestrian moving between Havertree and the centre of Exeter. Um, I do notice that the the, the bi bicycles do go on the pavement sometimes, um, and given the, the traffic, maybe that's a reasonable thing to do. But the distance between the bus stop and where the bus is um, outside Waitrose is not that great so I do hope the buses won't not the buses the bicycles uh, won't won't be passing by there as often as I imagine it possibly some something like that will be in the play anyway which is three Thursdays in May um, it's three Thursdays in, how am I doing for I think I'm just going, going, going to ca carry on talking about this. Um, the 15-minute Garden City is going to going to turn up in on the second Thursday in May, um, which is a positive idea. And a lot of the, a lot of the tweets and conversation you get around this seems to be coming from some other place. It's not always based on what's what's really going on. In Hevetry or Whipton or Exeter, um, but the the fifteen minute city turned up as a, a negative thing somehow, um, as if local authorities were going to force you to only shop on a Wednesday or something. It's all very peculiar. 
but actually I think the 15 minute city is quite a, quite a positive idea um, and so if, if you've got the three Thursdays that there will be um, just a total mess of non-communication as uh, for the first Thursday which the, the buses the bus stops will talk to each other about um, and over here and then uh, the concept of the 15 minute garden city based around Hevitry Pleasure Ground um, as the centre of the garden city uh, there's obviously lots of other 15 minute cities and possibly the Waitrose grounds because they 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 planning the planning gardens must have been completely different whenever that was developed um, but how that works I don't know but that that might be in the background of the of the play um, and then the, the the third Thursday will be some sort of um, result of a communication so there will be a an independent candidate standing just on stopping the experiment um, but they don't say uh, get rid of it no interest in neighborhood resources or traffic or the climate or anything like that they say they want actual consultation they want meetings to really talk about what is possible and what would make sense and then starting again on some other basis um, so how much how how much um, in the in the in the spirit of doc, documental theatre or doc, you, um, uh, verbatim theatre, there's various bits the, theories which I'm I'm hoping to study as well. Um, but at the moment, I think we're just totally stuck in in um, phase one. So there's lots of material for phase one, which is just a complete mess. Um, but it could move on to uh, stage three at some some point um, but it would be if, if I can't um, write the outline of that there'll, there'll just be discussion around what the what the what the uh, problem is with that because this uh, this drama show uh, there is substance to it but there's a lot of <laughs> uh, background the the making of the non, the non making of and so forth anyway I'm I'm almost out of, not out of time, but I need to need to get, sort out a few things. Uh.